Okay, let me introduce you, doctor. Okay, uh, doctor. Welcome all participants uh, for the live webinar with Dr. Russell, uh, who's going to take uh, the subject of Allen's keynotes and how you can use it in your day-to-day -day practice. Uh, he's got more than 30 years of experience uh, and he runs his own homeopathic hospital at uh, Sangam Nair. Now I pass it on to Dr. Russell who will take the webinar through. Go ahead, Dr. Russell. Okay. Yeah. Respected Dr. Karthik Ji, respected all doctors, homeopaths who have joined this webinar today, all the colleagues, even the students of homeopathy, a warm welcome to all of you on the behalf of Divine School of Homeopathy from Sangam Nair for this webinar. And I will going to share something which is very essential in day-to-day -day practice. So first of all, a lot of thanks to all of you listening and watching me over there on, in this webinar. So today I have selected a topic which is generally found to be a very simple because whenever we used to think of Allen's keynotes, we feel that it is too simple. But what I want to tell you that it is too simple, it's okay, but too difficult to digest unless we look towards it in a different approach. And that's why I will, uh, today I will going to share my experiences with Allen's keynotes how it is useful in day-to-day -day practice and we are going to learn a lot of things regarding the Allen's keynotes, whatever I know. Yes, I know that I am not sufficient, I have not yet reached to that level that I will come comment every time or ever. I will suggest that I am right person to explain each and everything. But I will definitely suggest that this is one of the important things which is most useful in day-to-day -day practice. It never replaces your rapid digestion. It never replaces your proper case taking. It never replaces uh, detailed study. Everything is required. But this is one of the one of the thing which with which you have to go ahead. So in day to day practice, if you have a practice, lot of patients are there, and every time it is not possible to report right. In such types of situations, Allen's keynotes is the best thing to utilize. The practitioners from the Kolkata side, that is the east of the India, they are always very, very familiar and very you know, confident about these two books, Allen's keynotes and Bowie's Watermelon. Because they learn by learn, they learn these two books by heart, and it has been taught in a different manner. I have I have learned I am or I am learning still the approach of them in my practice, and that's why I want to share whatever I have learned. So today's topic: understanding the Allen's keynotes and characteristics of the Madre Medica with no zodes. Out of which the last part with no zodes that I will not going to discuss. I will going to discuss regarding the things, uh, understanding the Allen's cone keynotes and characteristics of the Matra Medica. So we we'll go ahead with the thing. What is keynotes and what, uh, what do you understand by characteristics? Generally, for us, it looks very similar. For us, it, we find that keynotes and characteristics, they are one and same. It's not same. Basically, whenever you are dealing with the patients in homeopathy, number of times it happens that there is a big obstruction, big obstacle, and you are not getting a lock, you are not getting a key to enter into the case. Keynote is nothing but the key to open the lock of that patient. So, keynotes denote you something which gives you entry point into the case. That is very important. It is, it is the entry point into the case. And that's what we look whenever a patient is there in front of us or when he is, whenever he is entering in your clinic, he denotes something which gives you directly towards the remedy. So, that is the first opening lock with the help of a key is nothing but the keynotes. It is not always that every characteristic is the keynote. Characteristics 
comes later on at that time the characteristics never gets so ultimately you there is a little bit difference characteristic symptom is the symptom which characterizes an individual that is what the definition we do characteristics are four types peculiar queer rare strange all those things we used to learn but characteristic every characteristic is not a um, every characteristic will is not a keynote and that's why helen have given very nice meaning or very nice name to his book helen's keynotes and the characteristics so both are different and both we have to learn in today's lecture so what are the keynotes and which are the characteristics that we have to find we have to choose we have to understand so let us go ahead with the next slide that is the just a minute it takes little bit time let us understand the structure of allen's keynotes first i think you have the books of allen's keynotes with everyone uh, allen's keynotes there is no index index is there but the medicine numbers are not given if you work out yes i have worked out with it and it has 186 medicines mentioned over there or explained over there and at the end he has added the 16 more nozodes in the book so it is totally 202 medicines are there out of which 486 are original keynotes and characteristic books from the original book the last 16 nozodes are added later on we we'll go ahead how to learn with them or how to understand them uh, my young colleague friend from Kal kolkata who has taught just a uh, days back regarding this thing and i i like his approach because this thing was new for me to understand i was teaching the allen's keynotes to my students since long time but still to look it with a different angle was very important and that that's what i got from him from dr navin and that's why i'm the first six seven slides are there which are the entry points in the case those are shared by my friend and that those i will going to discuss so whenever we have to go ahead or we have to learn the allen's keynotes first important thing is that we have to understand the allen first do you know his life sketch i will not going to in, go into the details but major works which have been done by dr s c allen his life span was between 1836 to 1909 so he born just whenever hanuman was there and he was there up till in 1909 during that time earlier he used to practice with a lot of medicines but when he met dr adolf philippe and he found that adolf philippe is using it in a different manner he learned it and he expressed it in his own manner so in 1879 the homeopathic therapeutics of intermittent fever that has been written by sialen then 1898 keynotes and characteristics with comparisons of some of the le leading remedies of the mantra medica what we are, we used to discuss today then in 1900 allen bonihusen's slip card repertory that is that has been developed by him in 1910 after his death Mantra Medica of Nozodes was published, which was written by him earlier, but published later on. So this is nothing but one important thing, and one more thing which you everyone must know that he has treated an epidemic of diphtheria with diphtherium, and he was so confident of using that he has used it with a number of people. and he was so confident that he asked the profession to put it on test and publish the failures to the world he was so confident that there will be no uh, family which suffered after giving the diphtheria to the baby so that was a one aspect which must we must learn from the allen that he he has treated a epidemic with the help of diphtheria in the similar manner we can go ahead nowadays covid 19 it is in fact very much spreading epidemic and in maharashtra basically we have a tremendous spread of epidemic why don't you why don't we go for it 
if we work with our intellect to find out what is genus epidemicus yes definitely we're going to get a remedy and if I, I myself have worked it out arsenic album is found to be a very good genus epidemicus and we work as a preventive remedy for the any type of viral situation it it boosts your innate immunity and that is the role of a genus epidemicus it it never produces antibodies it just stimulates your innate immunity so that you are in a strain in a condition that you can find out find it out a solution or confidence to fight about, uh, about any type of infection that gives that boosts your confidence that boosts your energy that removes your fears and that is most important thing one must think so this, this is one more thing one more lesson we must learn from this uh, we will go ahead and we will start with our regular seminar so this was just an introduction so where and what to read from allen skinner's generally what happens whenever we being a homeopathic student what we do we learn a remedy just read it we read it up to the point of relations and we never read the relations we never read the general modalities we forget that we read only the keynotes and we stop over there reading every materia medica we used to do that much of work but this is so important that each remedy must be read from the full name of the remedy heading to the last line of the relation aggravations and amelioration this is too important the most important characteristic feature and field of application may be found under the headings of relation aggravations and amelioration in fact from clinical point of view you will get number of hints from allen's keynotes regarding the uh, application of a medicines or comparing the remedies or sometimes you get the hint how to use this remedy at what time you must use how much to repeat how much you should not repeat all those things have been mentioned in this relation part or which remedy follows well which remedy you should not use everything is given in this relationship and that's why my dear friends don't forget the last part of the every remedy that is relations aggravations and amelioration so first important thing from the top to the bottom everything from the remedy should be read then how to read how to go ahead first important thing this is new for me it is that because i was not looking i was knowing each and every sentence but i was not knowing exactly what it means the first line or first two lines or first paragraph in the most of the remedies cover the whole field of action of the remedy you open the allen you open any polycrest for example we'll take an example we'll open the sulfur from the allen and we'll read what is there just oh, if you have books open your book you will find that sulfur that is first common name is given the brimstone flower of a sulfur the element and see first two three lines explains whole field of action where exactly this remedy will go to work so see what is written over there this is this is too important immediately it touches your life mind adapted to the persons of scrofulous diathesis subject to venous conditions especially of the pro portal system see being a homeopathy practitioner or being a homeopathy student even a pg student we must understand this line this is too important for us we have to understand what is written scrofulous diathesis what is scrofulous diathesis it means it affects the glands specifically lymphatic system the lymphatic flow a draining system c second the part of it subject to venous conditions where veins gets involved venous congestion there is lot of flow through the veins veins are again a drainage system through which the deoxygenated blood and material is taken away and lastly specially of the portal system the portus portal venous system again a draining system from your abdomen see this is too important to understand my dear friends it has been every time said 
that after acute inflammation, acute disease, you must give a sulfur as an anti -sorry. Why? It has been written over there. We are following it. We never think what is the correlation with the modern science. How it is correlated with the pathology, we never understand. Basically, when I think about it, when I read the pathology, I have taught the pathologist to the students also. When we learn the acute inflammation, there are two sequelae of acute inflammation. First sequelae is resolution and second sequelae, sequelae is that if resolution never happens, it leads to the chronic inflammation. So resolution is the most important thing. What is the resolution? Bringing back the acute inflammatory state to the normal, leaving or removing the necrosed material through the venous system, through the lymphatic and keep that making that area again fully as it is as healthy. And this is what is the thing which is called as resolution. Sulfur, if you think properly, stimulates this process. It drains from the venous system. It drains from the lymphatics and drains the necrosed material and brings back again the healthy state. So if nothing remains over there, there will be no further recurrence. We call it as an antisoric remedy and that action. But here, from modern point of view, sulfur stimulates the resolution and it never recurs. See, this is how we have to think. We have to utilize your intellect, our intellect in order to understand the things, how they are being mentioned. The second line which mentions over there, the persons of a nervous temperament, quick motion, quick temper, plethoric, skin, excessively sensitive to atmospheric changes. See, every word from this sentence is again important, which denotes the whole field of action. Field of action. Persons of nervous temperament, Nervous temperament means what? Because nervous means we consider generally when we use a Marathi language, it is called the depressed. But nervous is not like that. Nervous means in materia medica and in repertory, when we use this word, it means on the tip of their nerves. They are sensitive. They are quick to react. They are quick tempered. They are quick motion, alert. This is the sulfur, plethoric, full of blood, skin excessively sensitive to the atmospheric changes. So there is, there are a lot of changes which happen, suddenly reaction happens over there. See, there are three more remedies which he has mentioned in the bracket, the Epasar, the Kalika, the Sorayanam, all of them are sensitive remedies and reacts to the situation. Little bit slow is Kalika, but Hepar and Sorayanam, both are most chilly and most reacts fast. Third line also gives you the importance of it, that how patient enters in your room. So first two lines mention the whole field of action and from third line or third paragraph, next three to four or five pages tells you something regarding the another thing that it denotes you something. That will, so what is written over there? For lean, stoop shouldered persons who walk and sit stooping, walk stooping like an old man and they come to you in this manner and they sit in front of you. They are young but look old. See, this is the entry point. So here you have to understand that next two, three, four, five lines are the de denotes you the causes or it explains you the manner in which patient may present their suffering or they refer to the different characteristics or the guiding features of the remedy. So they gives either a generality they give either keynotes, they, they give you how the patient enters in your clinic. So last line which we have learned that they are stoop shoulders comes to you sitting over there looks like an old people even a young person looks like that. So that is the next three four lines of the LNs always denotes the entry point of the patient. So either you get causes over there, either you get such types of entry points, either you get different characteristics or general features of the remedy and those are very important to understand. So we'll see which are next 
three four lines which indicates or denotes in the sulfur so standing is the worst position for sulfur patients they cannot stand even standing position is uncomfortable see this is related to the person as a whole riding symptom and that's why they come to you and they ask you doctor shall i sit and they sit like this this is too important to understand in fact this plays a very vital role then another point see what you have to watch which gives you key dirty filthy people prone to skin affections like a sore eye num aversion to being washed always aggravated after a bath too lazy to arouse himself too unhappy to lie see this is what sulfur is i will not going to elaborate but i will going to give you regarding the sulfur those things that these are next three four lines are guiding symptoms which guides which shows you how the patient is which guides which gives a key towards the remedy so children cannot bear to be washed or bathed emaciated big belly restless hot ticks of the clothes at night have worms but the best selected remedy fails these are key notes related to the human being related to that specific patient related with the children related with the uh, women whatever may be the what type of patient is there who will who is sitting in front of you next few lines always denotes the generalities the key to the case and that's why in every um, remedy which is a deep acting remedy or which is a constitutional remedy in elens it has been written like that then another there are few more keynotes are there which are there uh, you go through it uh, i will not going to discuss those because i don't want to teach you sulfur if you want to learn sulfur from me just uh, open my youtube channel uh, find it out sulfur over there i have given one and half hours discussion explanation about sulfur from elens keynotes so explaining sulfur is not my um, topic of today that's why i will not highlight because it is given over there and you can watch whenever you will be free and you read those that sulfur so uh, after first the field of action the second part next few paragraphs is nothing but related with the generalities keynotes or entry points of the patient and then next comes is the most important part here the rest rest means what the different pathological or clinical condition starts thereafter you open any remedy which is body rest either a calcarea gab any any remedy like lycopodium like this is the sequence with which he has approached so then comes different pathological clinical conditions during reading this paragraph reader must understand the point of differentiation refer to first is peculiar uncommon characteristic symptom or condition or a sensation so you have to look what is that peculiar specific characteristic symptom of that specific pathology what are associated features with it what is exactly the particular location what is specific particular modality its relation with the other symptoms or condition or sensation or concomitant so in that so after that there are one by one pathology have been mentioned so it starts with head sometimes then he explains what are the head features how is the headache and that headache specifically denotes yes it is sulfur headache if it is calcarea he will going to explain about the calcarea's nature over there even in pathology and that is the clue to number of times to the remedy and that that's what you have to do so which will take an example again of a sulfur next few lines where he starts with pathology see pathology he starts over there at the level of a congestion what he has written congestion to the single parts eyes nose chest abdomen ovaries arms legs or any organs of the body marking the onset of tumors and malignant or malignant growths especially at climactery the explanation of this i will not going to give now because we, we we you will going to learn sulfur over there it is recorded and you can get every meaning of every sentence over there 
I want to show you what is the proforma in which Helen enters into the remedy. So whole field of whole field of action. Second is the specifically key points or generalities or keynotes. And third, he enters with the pathology and pathology by organ by organ. So the next paragraph, he starts with the sensation of a burning. Then in the next paragraph, you will find over there that headache. He explains headache. See the headache. Sick headaches every week or every two weeks. Prostrating, weakening, sanguinary life with hot vertex and cold feet. Headache is explained in one sentence which guides you what type of headache is there in self. Sick headache. What is sick headache? We read the sentence, sick headache. What is sick headache? Headache which has a capacity to produce a person sick, sick for two to three days. Headache is like that. Generally, the migraines used to be a sick headache. They disturb the patient for one day, two days, three days. Person is absolutely becomes sick every week or every two weeks, and he becomes so much prostrated, so much weakness, and at the same time he explains the vertex is absolutely hot, but fits are cold. See, this is how one specific pathology is explained in detail. So you have to understand all those things. So he has given constant heat on vertex and everything. The hot flushes, then bright redness of the leaves, weak, empty, gone feeling, all those things. So pathology, he explains. After completing the head, he turns towards the stomach. Then after completing the stomach, he goes ahead. He explains whole GI tract over there. And he explains regarding it in detail again. Then he explains menses, menorrhagia, boils, skin affections, every system by system by system. You can find it out over there. I will not highlight this. You go from the read and uh, read it from the books uh, and listen my lecture regarding the sulfur. You will understand sulfur in depth. So this is not. I will going to. Highlight two days later. I will enter into the clinical aspect of Allen's keynotes later on. So, first thing which you have to look in Allen's keynotes is the basically whole field of action, first paragraph or first two paragraphs. Then, next three, four paragraphs, guiding symptoms, key, key points where how the patient comes to you. And then, third, the pathology one by one. And that pathology which denotes everything, every pathology is explained in such a manner that you can get a remedy directly if you all things are associated. And then after completing the pathology, see here he has mentioned to facilitate absorption of serous and inflammatory exudates in the brain, pura, lung, joints, when Brianna Kalimur are the best selected remedy fails. See here even he explained the pathology. The same thing which I have mentioned while explaining the first sentence of the remedy. And this is what you have to understand. Every sentence from the Allen's keynotes guides you a lot regarding the remedy. And then you can, if you read, making a picture in your mind, how the patient will going to come to you and how he will going to elaborate. And if you make it in your mind clearly, then you can catch sulfur from right from the keynotes, right from the key entry of the patient in your consulting room. First three points, and after completing first three points, he mentions over there the one important thing which one should not miss, and that is the relations and modalities. So this is one more important part one should not forget. These are the most important area and will help us in differentiation of the remedy guides us in selection of the remedy this is most 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 essential part of the remedy every remedy kent has given the details what is complementary remedy what is acute remedy to this remedy what is chronic of this is given which are the sequential remedies so he has given over there there is a cycle 
sulfur criteria like co cycle so cyclical pattern of relationship how one should utilize that or some hints in the practice which i i have added at the end one hint how he has mentioned over here so these are the things which one should not forget so this is this was just an example how to enter into the keynotes and how to find it out keynotes and understand the keynotes is it okay for you so that we can go ahead with the example first we'll see the relations of the sulfur which he has mentioned over there there are few relationships uh, relations which he has mentioned the complementary is aloes and sorinum elements from the abuse of metal, metals generally yes this sentence has a lot of role elements from abuse of metals how can you how can this is applicable where the metals goes whether they goes inside your mouth or whether they goes inside your stomach no metals means a human being uses ornaments number of times he uses different ornaments specifically in females they uses the earrings they uses something in the nose and so number of times they comes out with the eruptions and then it has been called as a contact dermatitis sometimes they wear bangles and in the bangles also there are sometimes the eruption develops it is also labeled by the name of contact dermatitis sometimes the finger the rings over there in your fingers and sometimes it reacts so elements from abuse of metals generally means like that sometimes some people even at the level of a tooth they feel up peeling is done and the cap is used and that cap whenever they starts using immediately they suffer abuse of metals so you have to understand every sentence of the allen's keynotes which guides you regarding you see here he has been mentioned regarding the calcium sulfur calcium glycosylcal and one more thing sulfur sarsaparilla and sepia that is also a cyclical pattern of relationship so these are the things which are hints he has to mention that sulfur is the chronic of aconite and follows it well in pneumonia and other diseases pneumonia it is the inflammatory disorder and after that this is nothing but the inflammation of the lung if pneumonia is covered in order to get it cured permanently what is needed is nothing but giving a sulfur because it removes everything it drains everything from that part no infection remains over there and immediately it set up, it goes forward so this is what the theoretical aspect of understanding the allen's keynote and now we'll turn towards the next part that is the clinical application before that the general modalities yes everyone knows everyone understands the general modalities so every general modality is so so important to understand we can get a remedy we can get number of times perfect similar on the basis of general modalities and that's why everyone should understand every general modality and that sometimes gives you the clue so here completes the theoretical part of it and now we will enter into the next part of the seminar and here i want to share certain cases from my practice and you have to match or you have to find it out what may be the solution sometimes this whatever i have written over there on the slide it is just uh, what uh, just a short description which is very important from the case i have taken it doesn't mean that i have not taken a thorough case i have taken each and everything about the case but this is with patient was presented so he a 23 years female delivered 6 months back started getting rheumatism immediately after the delivery she has received lot of allopathic medicines without any permanent result there was only palliative effect till she is on nsaids nsaids means non steroidal anti inflammatory drug they diagnosed it as a post partum rheumatism pain were paroxysmal pains were paroxysmal changing place from joint to joint i asked her how was the labor and whether it is normal or lscs she explained it was very horrible experience doctor it's a vacuum delivery 
and my cervix was so tight that it is not getting open it took very long time for delivery they have given me multiple injections in order to open my cervix or my mouth of the uterus i was tremendously exhausted during whole process continuously the pains were there and i was quite sure after listening this because it denotes a very clear cut remedy anyone who has a clue regarding the remedy so if you have you can put it over there you can write your idea regarding this yes definitely yes if you find it out from your allen's key notes you get same picture as has been mentioned over there it gives you exactly the remedy and then i will i will discuss this remedy yes colophyllum yes definitely colophyllum see first sentence what it he mentions over there specially suited to the women's elements during pregnancy fertilization lactation very important correlate the if you keep this in your mind you can enter into the case this is too important rheumatism of women see he has mentioned rheumatism of the women he is not mentioning it rheumatism general it is specifically related with the women specially of the small joints in bracket he has written actia spicata actia spicata is very famous for the wrist rheumatism everyone knows erratic pains take place every few minutes like a pulsatilla painful stiffness of affected joints this is the rheumatism of the colophyllum here you can read it out directly yes this is the entry point where you can get directly to the remedy our patient was lactating patient or postpartum there is rheumatism started at that time the whole process in one show the same thing that that will we are going to learn will today what will do will learn the colophyllum colophyllum is very important remedy to understand generally it looks like a short remedy it is not short remedy it is not rare remedy or it is not organ remedy it is a remedy which has good proving so what is next the intermittent paroxysmal spasmodic intermittent so they comes stops again comes again stops in the paroxysms and they are spasmodic as if a spasm when it is related with the abdomen uterus the spasmodic pain is more characteristic over there in case of colophyllum chorea hysteria epilepsy and puberty during establishment of the menstrual function see pathology he is now ex explaining chorea chorea is involuntary movement of any muscle on any organ hysteria features are related with the mind hysterical features number of times it looks like affectation epilepsy at the puberty specifically mentioning it starts whenever a girl enters into puberty and epilepsy starts see very clear cut indication during establishment of the menstrual function so at the time of menstrual function and epilepsy starts sometimes it looks hysterical till that period nothing was there and how this has happened like uh, racemosa over there semicipua having the similar type of feature leucorrhea see the female complaints they are very important leucorrhea what type of leucorrhea is there leucorrhea is acrid exhausting acrid means it burns the part it is very strong and exhausting because of which exhaustion is there upper eyelids heavy as to raise them with the fingers like gelsenium it is a uh, one of the common indication of the disease anyone knows it is the myasthenia gravis where drooping of eyelids happens to be there but it is common to the gelsenium yes definitely gelsenium with moth spots on the forehead what are moth spots what what happens we leave this sub these words we never understand this moth spots are like a chloasma like brownish pigments happens to be there or butterfly like pigments happens to be there on the face or forehead is moth moth spots he has written over there 
the sepia is given over there so moth spots very close to sepia see this is a women's remedy you find it out that this is close to women's remedy again sepia again ipis moza leucorrhea in little girls see this is very important leucorrhea there are colon is given so every part of that Uh, rub, uh, specific paragraph related with the leucorrhea so leucorrhea exhausting then leucorrhea associated with upper eyelid heavy has to raise with the fingers leucorrhea with moth spots on the forehead leucorrhea in little girls leucorrhea preventing pregnancy see number of times number of patients comes to you in your opd for the sterility problem then they tells you that they have a strong acrid leucorrhea which is not getting covered and doctor i am not having that every report found to be normal and nothing is abnormal and still i never get an issue see this is one important thing if there is acrid leucorrhea preventing the pregnancy this is one remedy one should not forget this is how you have to correlate you have to understand every sentence by sentence word by word then you can get a core of the remedy so we'll go ahead with this same remedy next paragraph that is also important for all of us we'll learn this remedy by heart this is short remedy over there not too much is given in allen's keynotes habitual abortion from uterine debility habitual abortion habitual means hab it is habitual it is happening again and again what what is the treatment in allopathy in fact they don't have a very specific treatment what do they do they are giving lot of progesterone and only bed rest to the patient number of times even after doing that the abortion happens to be there they go for cervical stitch and still there is a problem we have good remedy we see this remedy and what is there habitual abortion from uterine debility uterus becomes debilitated means what your uterus doesn't carry the strength it doesn't carry the tone to keep that pregnancy alive and stick to it and that's why the habitual abortions are there see this is what you have to understand from the patient there is one more remedy having the similar type of feature habitual abortion from uterine debility electris farinosa is another remedy and what he given what he has compared helonius he has compared with this feature and what what is important of helonius habitual abortion from anemia with profound melancholy so in case of helonius it is anemia most important associated with profound melancholy the sadness see habitual abortion is there in both the remedies but it is differentiating point and that he has made clear over there to understand how this colophyllum can be used as a remedy in case of habitual abortion then he explains about the labor process and this is good remedy my mrs she is a gynecologist and we have a lot of cases delivery cases in our hospital and we try our homeopathic medicines number of times and number of times i have find it out that they works this is these are few remedies i used to keep over there in my delivery labor room colophyllum is one of them the semisifuga is one of them pulsatiline high potency 10m because kent has mentioned that pulsatiline 10m potency stimulates the contraction in his lesser writing he has mentioned about it so i keep pulsatilla if the pains are not strong this is one remedy where false labor pains are there and delivery process is long it is delayed and if os is tight so spasmodic rigid os in allopathy they give us ergometrine epidocin but it it produces what had what it what it causes it 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 is soft soft muscle relaxant but at the same time the muscles of the uterus also the number of times becomes weak and postpartum hemorrhage is quite common after giving lot of epidocin but here spasmodic rigid os delays labor needle like pricking pains in the cervix see very clear cut idea he is giving over there labor pains how are the labor pains 
Labor pains are short, they are irregular, they are spasmodic, they are tormenting, troubling a person a lot, useless pains in the beginning of labor. If there are female uh, homeopaths are there, they must utilize our remedies. There are beautiful remedies in homeopathic if you read Ellen's with this in this way, you can use those remedies in female components, specifically in labor room, and you have ample remedies to be utilized in labor room. And definitely they work even better than your um, oxytocin or this ergometrine or all those contramol, etc. These are the best remedies to be utilized. See what he says, there is Actia again he has mentioned, that is Simisipuga. No progress made. Progress hot in the cell. If, if it is not happening, this is a good remedy. It correct deranged vitality and produce efficient pains if the symptoms agree. See, this sentence plays a very vital role. Will correct deranged vitality. Patient is exhausted. Nothing has strength to pick a pain and to deliver the baby. What he says? It, pro it produces efficient pains if the symptoms agree and it stimulates that patient. It increases vitality. See, hemorrhage after hasty labor, want of tonicity, passive after abortion. See, in delivery happens to be there and uterus is not getting contracted. The tone is lost. It is flaccid. What do they do? There are a number of things they have to work it out. They use oxytocin, they use methargine, methyl ergometrin. But think about our remedies. It is given hemorrhage after hasty labor. Number of times what happens? Number of people, what do they do? They use a lot of pressure, under pressure. And that's why this is called as a hasty labor. They try to do it by external pressure. And at that time, when the female delivered, she comes out and she has a postpartum hemorrhage only because because the uterus is now flaccid. Tone, tone is lost. This is good remedy to be utilized. Passive after abortion. So there are two more remedies which he has mentioned. Yes, sickle is definitely there because sickle loses the strength over there. And flapsy versa pastoris is another he has mentioned over there. So we have ample remedies during labor process and we can use them in our uh, patient. Hemorrhage after hasty labor, that is after pains. After pains, after long exhausting labor, spasmody across lower abdomen, extend into the groins. See, after pains, see terminology, you have to learn from the um, dictionary. After pains means after labor, there is lot of pain in the uterus or in hypogastric region along with severe pain in the lower back or at sacral region or in the hips those are called as an after pains after long exhausting labor if pains persist this is very important remedy give poropalum and it's settled. instead of giving arnica or rasta or saruta this is very specific to stop them spasmodic pains that, that we have discussed across the lower abdomen extending to the groins it extends to the groins if it extends to the shin bones carbovage and colosin is the remedy but here he specifically mentioned these after pains enters into the groin and last point regarding the labor case after delivery lochia that is the discharge per vaginal discharge after labor for protracted, protracted means in, it remains for longer time of duration. Great atony, atony means tone of the uterus is lost. Passive, oozing for days from relaxed vessels. Vessels not getting closed because the tonicity of the uterus is lost and there is continuous lochia or per vaginal discharge is happening for longer time of duration. One more remedy sequel that such loss of tonicity is again marked. So this is what you have to understand from the alien. See very nicely he has mentioned how it, how useful this remedy is there in your labor, labor room. And then he has given the relationship. See, similar to Actia, similar to Belladonna, similar to Pulsatilla, similar to CK, the Clapsibarsa, the Vibirnum opilus. To all these you have to compare the remedies. 
similar to labor pains of pulsatilla, but the mental condition is opposite. So pulsatilla is mild, but it is aggressive, disturbed, irritable because of pains. Similar to sepia at level of moth patches and reflex symptoms from the uterine irregularity. So these are very important things. This is how we have to learn every remedy. Now I will not going to read or teach each and every remedy. We have to understand every meaning sentence by sentence in balance. Then make a picture of it in your mind. Create an idea how the patient will enter and that will be sufficient for in BUZ practice to touch to the remedy. Now I will share only the cases in which you are going to find it out uh, just remedy. You just um, tell me your remedy. This is the second case. You just in the box you can write down your remedy. A 49 years lady came to me with menorrhagia since three weeks with anemia and painting spells. She said, I was all right before three months. Since this grandchild brought to me by my daughter, there is overexertion. I cannot accommodate that overexertion. I have done allopathic treatment. This settles for a month when they have given me hormones. Now it's too much, not at all settled. It's too profuse as if, flood, as if in a flood, dark in color or in clots. Today morning, I fainted in the bathroom. Since this problem is started, I am having very severe lumbosacral backache as if something is cracked inside. Gynecologist advised me to do hysterectomy, which I can't. I have responsibility of this doctor's child. Please do something, doctor. Can you help me? This was the thing with which she has, she has presented. That, that was the crux. Everything is there, which, which gives or guides you towards the remedy. So what is your answer? What is your remedy? Remedy is very clear. Anyone? It's too clear. Yes, it's a trillium pendulum. See, this trillium pendulum, first sentence of the remedy, what it denotes? Hemorrhage, copious, both active and passive, usually bright red, from nose, from lungs, from kidneys, from uterus. See, this is most important thing, which if you have understood trillium in this sentence, you get immediately, yes. Then second important thing regarding this remedy, we're not going to read every symptom of this. We're going to see what is there in our case. Menses, they are profuse every two weeks, lasting a week or longer like after over exertion or a too long ride. See, this is what the, there in our patient. Flooding, fainting, lot of mm, blood. Menorrhagia, protracted menses, flow profuse, gushing, bright red, at least moments, like Sabina, from displaced uterus at the climacteric. See, at the climacteric, this was very important. Our patient was at the same age, same age, every two weeks, dark clotted, like Clapsibers or Astilego. And last one, the profuse uterine hemorrhage at climacteric, flow every two weeks, Pale, faint, dim sight, palpitation, obstruction, and noises in ears, painful sinking at the stomach. So this is how we have to. This is given in the Allen's. Only thing is that you you must catch it. And if you learn Allen's by heart, then it is possible to go over there. So relationship. We will not go into details. We'll listen a third case, so so that you can understand that in a proper manner. This is a very nice case. It was just two months back in my opinion, the patient child was brought, who was nine years old and with a continuous high grade fever since four to five months. His cholestectomy was done one year back for gallbladder calculi. Since six months, he's continuously on antibiotics to which he, he is not responding now. He was on keptum with antibiotics three times a day. He was having a severe pain epigastria with nausea and vomiting. Treating gastroenterologist asked him to reoperate and remove the bile duct as it looks to be infected. When he was brought to me, his temperature was 100 degree Fahrenheit and pulse was 150. His tongue was absolutely clean, but his face was looking hypocritic. There was severe body pain, and with patient, it, in the parts lay on. 
uh, it is written in Marathi. Some people can understand, but if you don't understand, he is telling me that he he, he patient is not ready to sleep on court. Uh, uh, he says that that it is very hard for him to lie down over there. And he said one more thing that he is getting chill from his back. And this this picture I have got one important clue. What is keynote? That pulse is out of proportion to his temperature. That was very important thing one must find it out. So remedy, everyone knows. If anyone adds over there, you can add your remedy. It is very clear. Yes. Sure, it is pyrogenium. Yes. Because pyrogen has that very in proportionate pulse rate. I am going to tell you that is called as nothing but the uh, in proportional tachycardia. So generally what happens, the temperature raises by 1 degree Fahrenheit, the pulse raises by 10. If it is 97 degrees, the pulse will be 70. If it is 98 degrees, the pulse should go to the 80. If it is 99, pulse should reach to the 19. And if it is 100, pulse should go to the 100. So this is proportional. In case of pyrogen, it happens that temperature remains 100 only and pulse rate is 150, much more than normal. So relative tachycardia is the characteristic of the pyrogenium. That is first hint in the case. Second important is that tongue is clean, very clear cut. So that also we have to understand. See, the for, see what is given over there, we will, we will find first sepremia or septicemia, puerperal or surgical from domain or severe, severe gas infection during course of diphtheria, typhoid or typhus, when best selected remedy fails to emulate or permanently improve. This patient was there in the septicemic state, comes to us and he has presented with a fever since long time and with a toxic look, a toxic, the bed feels was too hard to the patient, then there were typical tongue was clean, smooth as if varnished, fiery red, there was vomiting associated with, taste was like a first like, and then there was a last feature which was very characteristic of that, pulse was abnormally rapid, out of all proportion to the temperature, like a lilium tip. So I have given pyrogen, I have given in a water potency. It is a hint for all of you to utilize this remedy in a water. If a fever is a high grade and you have to reduce that fever, put a pyrogen, generally in 200 or 1 m, you put it in water, 10 or 15 globules, stack it in a in a cup of water or a mug of water and just give that 2 TSF of that water every time. Every time you, you ask the patient to stir it clearly and take two teaspoonful every even after 15 minutes or half an hour and till the temperature comes down. I have given this for two, three days continuously. The temperature comes down and gradually pulse also settles. Within three days, he has said he came out of temperature. Even his abdominal complaints, he started getting good stools or passing normal stools. Earlier, they were very strong with that patient. And that's why, with the help of a pyrogen, he came out of that situation. They went to the same doctor who was treating him since last four to five months. And they showed that oh, with homeopathy, we got the result. So this is very important remedy. One should not forget. And it has a lot of importance in our day-to-day -day practice. A lot of features are there in pyrogen. The chill begins in back between the scapulae, severe, general, of bones and extremities, marking onset of septic fever. Uh, temperature 103 to 106. Head sudden, skin dry, burning, pulse rapid, uh, small wiry pulse, 140 to 170 degrees, cold, clammy sweat follows. See, this is what a pyrogen is there. Next case, a short case, all those cases are short one, you find it out, this is one more. A young boy around 20 years brought to me, very exhausted and weak, for severe indigestion since two months. 
Two months back, he suffered from the typhoid malaria complex, treated with 14 days course of antibiotics and chloroquine, and he started getting this problem. There is excessive accumulation of gas in the abdomen immediately after eating or taking even juices. Feeling little bit better after irritation, he craves tasty rich food which disagree. His face was looking sickly horrible, pale with lot of um, sweating on the face. So what's the remedy? Remedy everyone knows. If you know Ellen, you directly touches the remedy because this is clear cut picture of her own remedy. Not enough. Number of times it happens that we look towards the remedy with an Aksumika because he has consumed as a he has consumed the already allopathic medicine and to give an Aksumika is better option. Naxomika may palliate the things but will not going to cure the patient. So you will going to find it out similar in one remedy and that is carbo veg, a vegetable charcoal. See, first sentence of the remedy, for bad effects of exhausting diseases, whether in young or old, synchona, phosphorus, sorina, cachectic persons whose vitality is has become weakened and exhausted, persons who have never fully recovered from the exhausting effects of some previous illnesses, have never recovered from the effects of typhoid or sorina, like sorina. There is one more feature which was very marked with this halo, Elements from quinine, especially suppressed intermittents, and that was he was suffering from the malaria, typhoid malaria complex. So I have given him a carbovage, and with carbovage, these features immediately settled. There was weak digestion, simplest food disagree, excessive accumulation of gas in the stomach and intestine, aggravated look lying down after eating or drinking, sensation as if stomach would burst, effects of debauch, let suppers and rich food. Let suppers means those who used to eat late in the night. Rich food, everyone knows. Erectations gives temporary relief. Desires to be fanned every time. So these are the features with which I have prescribed carbohydrate and patient setter. We'll go directly with the next case, simple case again. Uh, you have got the remedy directly. Uh, instead of that, we'll learn one more case that is more important to learn because uh, that is that have a meaning. It, it gives me a lot regarding the patient. This is a short case. Just go through the case. A child was brought to me two months back with a lot of eczematous eruptions on the whole body, discharging sticky offensive. Mm, fluid and blood. Scalp was also filled with similar eruptions with thick scalp. I asked the parents to move his shirt and pant. The child refused and start crying. I asked why. Parents said his shirt and pants sticks to the ulcer and it's very difficult to remove. While removing, scabs comes out and with lot of discharge and bleeding and it's too painful in house, he never wears any garments because of this. The child told me about the offensiveness of the body, and he was he is not able to bath also. So this is what the case case was very clear. Anyone who wants to highlight remedy is very clear, which mentions as it is in the patient, and it brings that patient within span of eight days. He recovered from those very dangerous eruptions. So it is a mesarium picture, yes, clear cut mesarium and patient came out of it. Eczema and itching eruptions after vaccination. The head is covered with thick leather like clutch, which under which thick white pus collects. Here and there, here is glued, matted together. First time is echorus becomes offensive, etc. So these are these are the ways with which you can approach with the Kent's uh, Allen skin notes. Uh, if you read the ends properly, there was one question was asked on in the chat box that plasma theory is found to be effective in Delhi. Why homeopathy experts cannot think of nozzle for COVID-19? Uh, my answer to this question is that uh, yes, nozzles you can use, but nozzles are always dangerous to be utilized if you don't know regarding the nozzles properly. 
unless and until they correlate unless and until they shows the complete relationship with the epidemic i want to discuss one point if you understand the genus epidemicus properly then you will come to the remedy the concept of genus epidemicus is that that after going through number of uh, remedy number of things uh, from the um, uh, treating number of patients from the epidemic you get a core totality of the epidemic on the basis of that you can come to that so that is that was the question which is not related with it so that's what that is what the only thing which i want to answer uh, we will go ahead with one more case that is very important uh, which taught me a lot regarding the um, it, just a minute i have we have learned that case this was just uh, one year back this fellow came it was difficult case for me a 30 years young man came to me with severe rheumatism since last 4 5 years i looked up to his reports which shows that it's a case of rheumatic heart disease he narrated history as i have started this 5 years back when i felt first neck and both shoulder started paining and swelling i thought it might be some sprain but as it was not getting settled i have Uh, consulted an orthopedician he checked me and asked me whether you have suffered from recurrent sore throats in the recent past yes that was my earlier complaint so he asked me to do all these tests and he said this is rheumatism and along with you along with you have problems in your heart he asked me to take monthly penicillin injections at least for 10 years and prescribe medicine till i used to continue them i was little bit free from pains but gradually this problem affected my lumbar back and later joints of the lower limb i feel breathless whenever i used to do exertion even running gradually along with this shooting pains i started feeling numbness in the my extremity every time a different joint started swelling and painful and very difficult to me for me when my doctor examined me he told me my heart, heart is beating slowly on examination his pulse was really 45 per minute report shows rheumatoid arthritis rna test strongly positive vso titer was positive a valvular heart disease esr was 120 mm for 1 hour and this was clear cut case of the remedy if you understand remedy properly with allen's keynotes yes definitely will come to the same remedy which i was mentioned over there by number of Uh, practitioners that it is a kalmia kalmia latia bola yes i have given it it takes long time to come out of the situation i have started the kalmia with the lm potency in this in this case so kalmia picture as it is mentioned over there if you find kalmia everything is in kalmia it is related with the valvular heart disease associated with rheumatism if you think about the kalmia one must think about the lithium carb also lithium carb is also important remedy you should not forget but which is not there in allen's keynotes both are very close but here one important hint is that it is downward motion or downward direction rheumatism it started in upper extremities and it entered in lower extremities later on so it is descending rheumatism was the very characteristic indicating the kalmia so these are the different cases which i have shared and with the, with the help of allen's keynotes uh, these are very important because in heavy practice this generally helps so relationship of the kalmia which is mentioned similar to ledum rhodum spigelia in rheumatic affections and gout it follows spigelia well in heart disease here lithium carb was not there in allens and that's why that comparison is not mentioned but lithium carb is definitely there so you have learned a lot regarding the cases only there are few hints and one should not forget the hints and that's why i told you that there are multiple hints i will show you only one slide regarding the hints and it is related with the drosera given at the end of the chapter 
that he has written. This is the end of the chapter. After even the modalities he has mentioned, Hanuman says in material medical pure. One single dose of 30 potency is sufficient to cure entirely epidemic of whooping cough. The cure takes place surely between seven or eight days. Never give a second dose immediately after the first. It would not only prevent the good effects of the former, but would be injurious. See, this is very important to understand. So, these types of hints, silence gives, and these are very useful in your clinical practice. There are multiple things you can learn from the alliance. And that's why these practitioners, those who used to practice at Kolkata are in East, they used to see a number of patients because they generally find it out that state that looks 200 patients, 300 patients per day because because they catches it from the Allen's keynotes. In a busy schedule, Allen's is a very important book. So one should not forget, but it doesn't mean that you should not use the repertory, you should not use other books, you should not other everything is, in, is essential for your practice but basically this book is very important when you are treating with the present state of the patient this give, guides you a lot in your practice so this was i know that it was very simple topic i have choose because i don't know who will, who is going to be a mob over there and i have choose the allen's keynotes so thank you all of you being there uh, for this seminar or webinar. I will suggest that I have discussed number of remedies in detail for nearly about one and a half hours time in on my YouTube channel. You can go over there, Dr. Prasad Rasar on YouTube channel and you can get n number of remedies discussed from different source books, from King's Matra Medica, from NM Saudharis, from Allen's Keynotes, from Adult Lipids Keynotes, etc. So thank you being there since long time, one, one hour, more than one hour. And thank you, Dr. Karthik, that arranging such thing. So thanks for watching me and thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Karthik. Rasal. It was, uh, it was an excellent uh, webinar. And I think uh, we've... I'm sure most of the participants would have learned a lot from this and how to handle so many patients at okay. you no know, one time. Okay. Uh, if any of the participants would like to ask the doctor anything, uh, this is the time. It is more so than what one is one. red spots in acidic acid? What? Uh, I'm not getting Dr. You. Anil Reddy has asked, huh? what is uh, P spots in acetic acid? Is it? Uh, it's not very clear. Rhea spots. It is from Alan's keynotes, whether he is asking me question or whether he is asking just a question. Oh, he's just asking uh, Rhea spots. Let me uh, let me get him to talk. So, okay. Uh, Ask him to put a question in uh, directly in the box so that. It will be quite. No, I am going to uh, ask him to uh, to ask you directly uh, for videos. Okay, no problem. Anil, ready? You can ask uh, what you can like to ask Dr. Rasul. Sir, there are few questions regarding potency and repetition of the trillium pendulum. It was asked in chat. Okay. I have okay. given trillium pendulum in 30 potency repeatedly every two, three hourly for a day. And next day when it settled a lot, nearly about 70 to 80 percent of the blood was settled, bleeding was settled. Then I have reduced those three times a day. And after third day, she never required a trillium pendulum thereafter. It stopped that time. 
so it was three months back this has happened and next means is found to be a normal in our case is there anything else what is epigia or what is the difference between epigia and sanguinary hello uh doctor there there's one what is the difference between a semicolon and a comma in allen's keynotes okay uh it is it is like that it is a, it no uh, whatever we used to learn is nothing but the same It, it, whatever we used to learn in gram, gram, grammatically, it is same. We we when we stop, whenever, for example, we'll open just one thing. For example, if it, if you read the bryonia over there, if you open the bryonia, if the patient, uh, if the they are having the books over there, you can find it out and immediately. Yes, do you have the book so that I will be able to explain regarding those things? Open the brain or any remedy. For example, pins are mentioned under the bryonia. Hello. Yes. Yes. Pins are mentioned. See there, pins. There is a. Comma is given. Pins first. Comma is given. Then stitching, tearing, worse at night, and then he has mentioned semicolon. This is too important. Semicolon. This is too important. Pins are different types of pins are mentioned. There are stitching types of pins are mentioned. Tearing type of pins are which are worse at night. But after that, the semicolon is there, and after semicolon, he has mentioned the modality. so the, this means that after that it is again related with the pain pains are aggravated by motion pains are aggravated by motion inspiration cupping so there is a comma all those three three things used to aggravate the pains the comma indicates that 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 the all those things are together the every sentence is like that that pains teaching tearing were at night is one sentence then pains aggravated by motion inspiration cupping is a separate sentence then again pains ameliorated by absolute rest and lying on painful side is another sentence so this was the method which they followed in order to make it short so that you can understand the whole cover within a paragraph and it means that every sentence mentioned over there is having its own meaning so you can get three sentences within a one paragraph separately so there are in bryonia you have pains teaching tearing was that night in bryonia pains are aggravated by motion inspiration and cupping then in bryonia pains are ameliorated by, by absolute rest so this is given within a paragraph giving a you know, comma or a semi comma so that you can understand that very clearly so everywhere in allen's notes this method is followed he has mentioned with pains or anything specific colon is given and then he has given either comma or semi comma thereafter so it makes very short paragraph but gives a lot of meaning and every word written over there has a meaning related with the first entity so that is the importance of it regarding it uh, uh can you explain uh, in brief how another question another question hmm there is one question is written the over there can between you explain epigia and the sick headache sir in sanguinaria you want to differentiate between the epigia and sanguinaria or you want to differentiate between the only the sick headache only the sick headache doctor only the sick headache doctor sick headache terminology already i have mentioned that it is there a number of remedies which disturbs a patient a lot it it looks like that whenever the sick headache is there there are number of remedies every everyone's characteristic is different in sanguinaria it settles from 
it starts from the neck it it starts from the occiput it goes up and it settles generally on the right eye a typical migraineal headache which starts from posteriorly settles over there and uh, uh, settles over right eye it is typical migraine picture disturbing patient for a day or two becoming a patient becomes sick is typical sick headache in case of sanguinary canadensia if you think of spigelia it settles on left side if, if you consider the cilicia it settles over the whole head or sometimes forehead uh, but all of them generally a migraineal headaches they generally affect the persons at that level so mm, there are a uh, number of remedies which uh, even lacan is having similar type of headache lack defloratum is actually having opposite that it starts from forehead and it goes back side so these are the headaches which troubles a patient a lot generally having a migraineal thing or migraine aspect over there and disturbs the patient there is one more question over there uh, by a same person that seneca remedy can be a drug of choice in pneumonia symptoms in corona uh, when you treat the epidemic or corona covid 19 patients there are number of remedies depending upon individualizing features you can predict a remedy before of examining the patient uh, you can think of a um, ars iodide is a very uh, sorry ars iodide antim ars antim tar there are multiple it is not a single remedy which you are going to consider it depends it varies from person to person it is not a first uh, one remedy that we will go going to think about or before and uh, taking the case if you are think, thinking about the remedy you can think of a genus epidemicus but you cannot think of a specific remedy for that specific epidemic or that patient it is a remedy according to the patient it varies it might be anything which has that much of death general death it is generally a psychosyphilitic miasm which is so marked in such a, such, uh, such cases or a sorosyphilitic aspect is much more in those cases and that's why remedy should cover that depth that myadam and also whenever you are treating the coronas i i will definitely suggest that there are different stages it runs through the different stages and if you go through the stage wise then you will understand the, that in earlier phase whenever there is only a coriza or it has been just started and with a little bit body ache or fever then you can think about the remedies which cover that aspect with their characteristic modalities sometimes it might be a camphor sometimes it might be a arsenic sometimes it might be even aram tripilum it depends upon the stages it depends how the patient presents it varies from person to person so seneca you can depending upon the depending upon the patient's presentation it is not specific Uh, i think with this uh, we have come to the end of uh, the webinar doctor and i'd like to thank you so much for sharing so much of knowledge uh, on the huge subject and we'd like you to do more seminars for us and yes, thank uh, you, for sir. all the participants who would like to get in touch with dr russell you can see here you can see his address you can note it down his mobile numbers you can email him with any doubts that you have and uh, before we close i'd like to thank our uh, sponsor bahula labs for kindly sponsoring this um, webinar and uh, and we'd like you to come back and watch more uh, webinars with us thank you so much dr rasul so thank you dr kartik and Uh, i want to ask was one, one question bahula yes. international it is what is that it is a homeopathic company or any i don't bahula, know bahula bahula is a third generation homeopathic manufacturing company so we they manufacture homeopathic medicines uh, since 1939 uh from in india in south india sir in south based india. in chennai okay. yeah Yeah. So okay, okay. So sponsored this uh, webinar or the series okay, of webinars that we're doing now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, thank doctor. Thank you. Okay. Actually, this is not the, my subject. 
in fact i am a organ and teacher but since last okay. 15 days i am working on the um, material medical 